Amen, amen. Well, you may be seated. You may be seated. You know, I don't have a lot of time on the clock, but I'm, I'm, I have to give honor where honor is due. I have to take off some time here to let you know about good ground. You know, I was a, a man that was uh, lost, homeless. I had a valley of decisions and not an answer to one of them. And I was in deep trouble. But because of uh, my man of God's decision to answer the call, See, people like to talk a lot of things about, you know what, you know, you was going to get to wherever you was going to get without God, I mean, without that man of God. God was going to get you to where. But let me tell you something. If it had not been for this man of God answering the call, where would you be? I can say, I thank God for my pastor, Philip G. Godot. I'm I'm here. This, this is my good ground. Yeah. Offense has no authority. That's right. That's right. And this is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about your good ground. So let me hear you say, Pastor Godot, Pastor Godot. is my good ground. My good ground. You know, inside of him, you can draw off of this man of God. I said you can draw off of this man of God. I'm talking about you can draw life out of him. Houses out of him. <laughs> Cars out of him. Peace out of him. I mean, you could just sow in to good ground, and then you can draw. You can use him. I use him. I use it. And I won't let offense be the reason to stop me from being able to sow into good ground. Now, let's just stand to your feet. Hold your Bibles up. Hold your Bibles up. Make this confession after me. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today, today this, day, this day, after receiving, after receiving the, word God, the Word of God, I will never be the same again. again. Said to lift me up, lift me out, up of out of the darkness into the light, into the light. Out, of out of poverty into wealth, into wealth. Out, of sickness, out of sickness into health, into health. out of defeat. In the, in the victory today, today this, day, this day after receiving, after receiving the incorruptible, incorruptible indestructible, indestructible ever living everlasting word of god i will never be the same again say never 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 never, 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 never. never ever 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 ever, never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> will i be the same again after hearing and receiving the living word of God. Now, Holy Spirit, you lead me, you guide me, you corral me, you direct me in the direction I should go. And thank you, Lord God, for confirming the word, for confirming the word in the hearts and the minds of your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Well, praise God. Is there anyone in here from Woodland in the house today? Oh, come on, y'all can shout louder than that. Amen. Well, praise God. I'm glad you was able to make it out. All right. Well, praise God. And uh, the message today is called Good Ground. Come on, somebody say Good Ground. See, the message today is called Good Ground because this is my pastor's appreciation day. And he's good ground. Amen. So what do you do? What do you do with good ground? See, a farmer, he nurtures it. He takes care of it. 
he's souls into it. Good ground. And let me tell you something. When you don't reverence your good ground, when you don't take care of your good ground, then now the seed that you plant on it will be tainted. The ground will be hard. You are not doing what you should be doing when it comes down to your good ground. See, a farmer, if he doesn't plow the ground, it would not bear seed. The seed that's planted into the ground can't grow. Now, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere with this. You know what would what, what a really uh, challenge you, and I, I really I have to get into this real quick, but you know what would have really challenge a man with his pastor or with his, uh, uh, his, his the anointing that is upon his life? See, the man of God, he don't listen to us. He listens to God. Amen. And see, when he hears from God, we may not agree with what God told him. And now, since I don't agree with what God told him, then now my good ground become tainted because I wants to get into rebellion and don't even know it. Now, I, I'm not talking about none of your families right now, so don't, don't, don't hold your rocks. But you know who's, who, who's perhaps the worst people to to turn you against your man of God? Family members. I don't want to see what you're going over there for. Taking all your money. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. That's all, that, that, that's all they're doing is taking your money over there. Family members. But see, they, they, they're the last ones to do something for you. At least if the, if the only thing the man of God did for you it's just prayed for you. It's more than what they do. Come on now. It's more than what they do. But let's just see what the Bible says about family members. Let's just go to Jeremiah real quick. Because they're always saying things. Always trying to come against you. That's why you can't tell them all the time what you're getting ready to do. Right I'm getting ready to go into business. No, don't, don't do that. You know what? Uncle Willie tried to do that and you know, that didn't work. So, so, so sometimes you can't talk to them about things because they always have something negative to say. And, and especially that enemy wants to use the opportunity to come against your man of God anytime he can. Now what I'm talking about, anybody that knows me know that I am definitely a spiritual talking man. I believe in the spirit because if I'm not in the spirit, then, then I'm behind. See, God says, I ponder the spirit of a man. You know why? Because if he waits to see what you do, he's behind. And he's not going to be behind you. So I'm, I'm looking in the spirit. And if I see it in the spirit, I can stop it from its manifestation. Okay, here we go. Are you in Jeremiah 12? Let's go to Jeremiah 12. And let's just read, I'm going to start reading at 6, in Jeremiah 12 and 6. And it says, For even thy brother and the house of thy father, and even they have dealt treacherously with thee. Yea, they have called a multitude against thee. Believe them not, Though they speak fair words unto thee. Sometimes, when, when it comes down to your man of God, they want to taint your good ground. Amen. See, when I believe, see, I'm alive today because of the word, That's right. the living word that he taught. 
He taught me how to believe. See, if had I not arrived here at Calvary Christian Center, 2667 Del Paso Boulevard, into the Overcomers program that came out of him, had I not arrived here, I never would have knew or understood how to battle when they say I couldn't live. But see, this, this man of God is saving lives. But people want to talk about things. People want to say things. But he's good ground. And you know what? I can understand the devil. I'm in the spirit. I can understand the devil. You know what he want to do? He want to taint your good ground. Here we go. Some people have spiritual strife with a man of God. Spiritual strife. Now they're not saying anything, but the Bible says, so as a man thinketh, so is he. And so now, since the enemy knows that if he can get you in spiritual strife with your man of God, with your good ground, then that ground has automatically became tainted and the devil is expert in, taint, in tainting your good ground. Amen. He's expert. So he can get you in a spiritual situation, in trouble, without you even thinking, I'm doing anything. Don't nobody know what I'm thinking. But you know what? I don't agree with that. Let me tell you something. Just because the man of God, you may see him. You may see him wrong. You may believe him, he's wrong. But that doesn't exempt him from God's authority. I might feel like, I, I, in my opinion, this should happen and that should happen and this should go on. But let me tell you something. That is not necessarily the way the word of God said in the way God said. If you don't believe it, let's look at David. Let's just look at David for a minute. Let's just talk about how David killed a man over his own wife took the woman, had a baby a buyer, all that, this is all premeditated stuff, and the man was good to him, but he still was king. See, in our book, we would have said, have his head, cut off his head. But let me tell you something, David was God's man. See, 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 this man of God over here, he's God's man. Don't get spiritually in trouble with him. Amen. Amen. Come on. Speak it. Don't think it's because you, you, you believe that, you know, he did something or said something or something wasn't right, that you are righteous by passing your judgment on the man of God. You know who you're coming against? You're coming against God now because God knew him before he was even born. Why he was in his mother's womb. Why he was in his mother's belly. He knew the assignment that he was going to put him on. So what we do is tell God, that, hey, you made a mistake by putting him there. God say, who do you think you are to talk to me and tell me I made a mistake, the creator of all. Your mind is not even capable of thinking on my level. How can you tell me I made a mistake? I can tell you how many grains of sand that's on the planet. I bet you know how long it'll take you to even say that number? It'll probably take you 30 days just to say the number. And you're going to tell me I was wrong? See, we have to watch ourselves in the spirit realm because God say, I ponder the spirit of a man. So the enemy knows that he can get us in trouble just by our thinking. Amen. That's why I make sure I'm careful. I'm careful with thinking. Now, now some, 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 some thoughts come through there. Come on. They come through there and I cast them down. 
What the Bible say, cast down every evil imagination that rises up against the word of God and bring it into captivity. Every thought. He says, now you're going to have them, but I want you to bring them into captivity and bring them into the obedience of Christ. See, when it comes down to your man of God, this is your good ground. Oh, no, no, see now, see now, you're giving a man too much credit. You know, God is, is God. Is God. Well, well, we know God. But let me tell you something. God used people. Not one of you ever seen God supernaturally put a bankroll or a check in the mailbox. Amen. Supernaturally. It just showed up in your purse. Supernaturally. I am the Lord thy God. <laughs> no, you never seen that. God used some system. He used a man of God. Okay. Let's just go over here. He used a man of God, and this man of God is the authority. He's the authority. It's not whether we like it or not. That's why I'm not worried about who's going to be president. You hear that? Presidents. I'm not worried about who it's going to be. You know why? Because God says I turn the king's head anywhere I want it. You can be president all you want. Anybody else, Trump, all the rest of them, they can be whatever they want. God said I'm going to turn my head and turn your head any kind of way I want it. So whoever gets to be president, God says all authority, I put them there. So this man of God was put here by God, and God has a purpose and a plan for his life. So he's good ground. Come on, come on, come on, come on, say it. So, say he's good ground. Good ground. You don't get a chance to see. He's good ground. Amen. See, because when I'm, when I'm in trouble, that's my wife. That's my wife. Because of this man. Now, pastor always told me, he said, you know what? If you ever want to believe a man is lying or see if he's telling the truth, just look at his wife. <laughs> now, before I came in relationship with him, I never knew how to treat a woman. I never did. I thought they should shut up, listen to walk, understand me. And then I came here and he started talking about how much he loves his wife. I was like, I ain't never heard of this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, she can, boy, I'll tell you. Boy, I, I believe that if you love the woman and you told her that you love her, she's going to play you like a grand piano. <laughs> if you ever told her that. <laughs> but now I can say because of this man, just look at her and see if I'm lying. It's been 11 years I ain't never had an argument or a fight with her. 11 years. Because of the teaching of this man right here. Now let me tell you something. He's good ground. Now whether or not you want to do what he says, there's a lot of things I didn't want to do. It's just like I almost left the church. Can I just say this? I almost left the church. Could I come up in there? And I call myself trying to be a blessing to my man of God. I want to bring in some french fries and, you know, some African perch fish, you know, salad. And he says, oh, Henry, thank you. He said, how'd you know I was hungry, son? And he said, well, I said, well, Pastor, I just wanted to bless you, you know, so I tried to get up. He said, come here, son, come on. <laughs> he said, you know, I want you to uh, preach next week. Next, next week. No, 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 look. Remember, I don't like people staring at me, number one. Especially back in them days. I didn't like people staring at me. And I didn't like, you know, talking because, you know, I'm, I'm, I need help. Come on now. And he said, I want you to preach. 
And from that day, I did. When I almost left the church, because I came down to the last night, and God told me, he said, you haven't even prayed on this thing, because I was, I was entertaining that thing. Where's Mike Cook? Mike Cook te teases me about that all the time. I was, I was just right there. And the Spirit of God said, you haven't even prayed on it. And from that day, I came up here and I preached. My whole life was born. Amen. I was created from that day because of this man of God. No, he's going to always, no, he's going to always ruffle your feathers. He's going to bring you up. That's what he does. He's good ground. He's going to bring you up to a level to where you don't even know or believe or think that you can be. Come on, somebody say good ground. good ground. Thank God for Pastor the Amen. Just thank God for him. Now, I had a, a, a person. See, cause, see he, I, I remember things he says. So he said, I don't want y'all ever fighting over me. Don't fight. Don't get in no, no fight over me. No, if people talk, let them talk. So I'm down here in this place where I work at, and this person going to come up to me and tell me about, I, 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 uh, I know this uh, preacher, you know. And I, he don't know who he's talking about, and he don't know who he's talking to. He said, I, I know this preacher. Now he's going to lie. He's lying. So we have to watch ourselves when people come and lie to you about your man of God. Amen. Inspect what you expect. So you will know what's going on. Here, this man going to walk up to me and tell me, hey, guess what? You know what? I was in jail with him. <laughs> oh, it took all the Holy Ghost, all the Holy Spirit to keep me from backsliding right then. <laughs> But he says, I was, I was in jail with him. And I says, oh, yeah? I said, when, when, when was that? He said, oh, about 2004. I said, really? 2004? I said, I, I was saying to myself, oh, he sent me to Florida in 2004. <laughs> I said, he couldn't have been in jail then. I didn't say nothing. And the Spirit of God said, don't say anything. Answer not a fool. Yes. Yes. Answer not a fool. Yes. Answer not a fool according to his folly of foolishness unless you be just like him. Now, if I'd have answered him, I would have had to be worse than him. Amen. You know, people say things they want to talk about. See, he's blessed. I, I didn't even know how to tie a tie before I met I copied him. <laughs> Every drop. <laughs> I was homeless when I came up in here. I was eating off the ground when I came up in here. When I came here, I was eating off the ground. I, I was hungry and had a bath in about eight or nine months. I was tore up. See? See, this is good ground. See, but the question is, uh, you're not looking at what was. You're looking at what is. How you like me now? Yeah. Just, just, just go ahead and say it. How you like me now? Because God, this man of God, would give you the words that would clean your yeah. act up. Yeah. I was in a position because my act wasn't together. Yeah. Come on now, Pastor. I know how to treat my wife, treat her good. I don't talk bad to her. I don't mess with her because of him. I don't mess with her. Whatever she wants. Hey, give me all your money. Okay, you have it. Give me your car. Go on, mama. Because there's no strife. And the strife knock at my door, too. He knocks and says, uh, hey, 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 your wife didn't cook today. And guess what? She ain't cooked yesterday either. Can I come in to tell her something about that? Because she's not on her job. I say, no, go next door. They in strife already. <laughs> See, my kids over there, they, they watching me. See, they know I'm not lying. Because, thank God, for the man of God that this is, because now I can have people in Woodland standing up saying, it's been six months, Pastor, no argument. Amen. It's been two years, no argument. See, because if I was going to tell a lie, then I would tell a lie that's believable. That 11 years is an unbelievable lie. 
That's unbelievable. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, people talk about things people have, like the man of God. He's blessed, boy. Pretty boat and everything. Nice home. See, people only hate on people only hate on you because they don't have what you have. Amen. Amen. See, I only have a little old bitty Corvette, and they talked about me. Talked about me. <laughs> oh, it must be nice, Mr. Preacher. You have a little Corvette with your little wings all up, and people out on the street, people out on the street, people out on the street, hungry. They don't even have food to eat, and you take it. You know, it sure must have cost a lot of tithe envelopes to get that. Oh, yeah, that's what they told me. Come on, somebody say, answer not a fool. Answer not a fool. See, all of this, all of this discipline is coming out of me because of that man. Amen. 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 I didn't walk in here with this stuff. I sit here and I learn. And thank God that he's here. Now, now they talk about having things. They talk about him. They don't know the church bought him a lot of things. Amen. They come here for the first time. Oh, look at that watch he got on. He sure must have paid a lot of money for that church bought it. Look at that car he has. Church going all around, the sons and daughters getting together, putting in on stuff, buying them stuff. They don't know that. Oh, look at all of that. Well, see, what they need to be glad. See, watch this. If God come and bless him, they'll really be hating on it. You know, I'm, I'm talk, I, I, know God is, I know God is blessing, but I'm, I'm, we're getting ready to go to some scripture on this. Because if God came down and did this today, come on, say Pastor's Appreciation Day. If God did this today, People be hating because they only hate on you because they don't have what you have. If they had what you had, they wouldn't be talking about you. But you don't have to apologize for being blessed. Don't apologize for being blessed. I'm not going to apologize not, not one time for being blessed because I had to do what I do. I had to obey. I heard a pastor say one day, no, don't hate on me. Just do what I do. Don't hate on me. Just do what I do. And then you can have what I have. Boy, I love this. Here we go. I'm, 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 I'm a... I got a little time. Look at this. This is Pastor's Appreciation Day. This is God talking to him. So I want you to say, what is God saying to Pastor Godot? Say that. What is God saying to Pastor Godot? Well, we're getting ready to read it. Go to Psalms real quick. Go to Psalms. Hallelujah. Come on, do y'all feel good in here today? Come on, just give me a great big shout if you feel good. Hallelujah. I feel good. So I'm at my papa house, you know, even though I'm nervous. You see, I'm walking because when he look at you, you just don't know. You just want to shut up. Just, What's your name, Henry? Oh. <laughs> I can't remember. But anyway, go to Psalms 2. Psalms 2. Psalms 2. And I'm just going to start reading. This is out the Message Bible. This is out the message. Talking about people, he, you, you know, God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have things. He just don't want them things to have you. Right. Now look at this. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Psalms 2, and I'm going to start right here at 7. He said, let me tell you what God said. He said, you my son, Pastor Godot, and today is your Pastor's Day. Pastor's Appreciation Day. So uh, what do you want? Name it. 
You want nations? Uh Uh-oh. We can stop right there. He said, do you want nations as a present? He said, how about continents as a prize? This is God talking. We're not talking about no Mercedes. We're not talking about no Corvette and no house. God is saying, what do you want? Do you want a nation? Do you want a continent? God is huge. Yeah. And he says, and he says, as a prize, he says, you can command them all to dance for you or throw them out for tomorrow's trash, which you won't. Pastor Godot. God don't mind you having big things. He doesn't mind you living on the top because that's where he want to put you. That's where you are. He said you'll be on top and not beneath. Where did this thing come from? That people want the man of God not to have. No, 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 check this out. Here you go, honey. Now, if Pastor Godot came in here like I was, which he'd never be, toe up, from the floor up, and start trying to preach, you, you don't, don't want to hear nothing? Because, because you, you, how, how can you receive from a man pushing a cart? The first thing you're going to come up and say is, well, wait a minute, what you talking about? How are you going to preach on prosperity and you have this cart out here? See, God has got to have a man of God somewhere so you could come up to that level. I never knew how to wear a suit until I ran into that man of God. I never knew how to do anything. I still need help. That's why I can't leave him. See, I, 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 I rest here. This is where I rest, right here. This is where I take my last breath in this ministry. If I have to leave the church because of offense, that's the wrong spirit. Come on now, Pastor. Go to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs. And that's what that enemy wants to do. He wants to give you legitimate. You know, he can come up with some good stuff. He watched good stuff to make you believe you right to come against the man of God. But you have to watch it in the spirit. Go to Proverbs uh, 25. Proverbs 25 and 28. Are you there? When you're there, say I'm there. Look at what it says right here. He that is not in control of his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without wall. You know what? If you're not in control of your spirit that's trying to turn you against your good ground, trying to fault find in the man of God and trying to turn you against your, where you sow your seed, your ground is tainted already because God says so is a man thinking, so is he. Be in control. It's okay if the thing come to your mind but cast it down because it had not been for this man. Look at the works. Just look around you at the souls. I bet you people can get up here and get testimonies for the, for the next six months straight or the year behind the good things that he did, but at, a, at the drop of one offensive thing, they'll turn and run away. Turn and run away. Because they sit there and they listen intensely. Their eyes, are, their ears are big as elephants. And they listen for him to say the wrong thing. 
They listen for the wrong thing to come out. They sitting there ready to pass judgment. Oh, there it is. See, see, that's what I'm saying. No, see, that, that was wrong. That, see, that ain't, that's wrong. Should have never. No, that's, you know what, that's your time. That's your time to shut your brain and start praying for him. I'm glad, I, I'm, glad I'm, I'm glad I'm in the position that I'm in because I can say all these things because I know how I feel. People to turn on you after you done helped them. Amen. You done poured your heart out to them. They done took up hours of your time. And they turn and walk away from you like you never existed. Come on, somebody say good ground. Good ground. Your man of God, Pastor Godot, He's good ground. 